Hi everyone, my name is Ruben Salazar and I am the head of Visa Direct at Visa. It is so great to be here virtually with all of you. Today we have the privilege to have with us Enrique Silva, his principal product manager at Remitly, Tom Balzer, his product management director at Canada Post, and Jimmy Dean, his managing director of capital markets at CIBC, to discuss remittances a very important topic that affects the lives of millions of migrant workers and their families around the world. Consumers are increasingly turning to digital payments to send money to family and friends around the world, to provide financial support or to celebrate special occasions. In fact, globally, it is estimated that 800 million people received money from families or friends to pay for food, utilities, and education. In 2020, the total value of remittances sent by some 200 million workers to their home countries was more than 700 billion. In 2021, this figure was more than 750 billion, the highest recorded number to date. As we all have seen, the pandemic significantly changed the way that people pay for goods, or send money. Digital remittances play a vital role by ensuring that families back home can continue to receive money despite obstacles presented by the pandemic. During the pandemic, remittances flows declined less than 3% from 2020, an amazing testament to the resilience of migrant workers. According to a recent visa survey only last year, one quarter of surveyed Canadian adults have sent money from Canada to another country, highlighting the growing digital adoption in a critical economic activity for millions of individuals everywhere. Now, despite the rise in adoption, remittances still represent one of the most fragmented financial services in terms of technology, economic models, providers, and user experiences. Millions of families face barriers in sending or receiving money across international borders. For example, the operating costs of sending money, the time it takes to travel to a physical location, the time it takes for payments to be received. For many of those who still send checks or money orders, it could take anywhere from two days to more than two weeks for people on the receiving end to access the funds. In the other hand, there is some sense of physical security in having the funds directly deposited into a debit card, bank accounts, or e-wallet, which allows greater access to other digital functions, such as e-commerce or P2P transfers. But True digital remittances will be achieved when the families back home can receive money digitally. For decades, we have focused on connecting the world through our secure global payments network to help individuals, business, and communities to thrive. Today, paying and getting paid digitally is no longer just a convenience, but a necessity for people. That's why, through Visa Direct, Visa's global money movement platform, we are working with global remitters like Remitly and issuers like CIBC and Simply Financial to help digitize overseas money transfers, allowing users to choose their preferred method on sending and receiving funds. CIBC and Simply Financial are leveraging Visa Direct to bring additional cross-border capabilities to their consumers and business clients. These clients can now send money to more than 120 countries and reaching a total of 5 billion cars and bank accounts worldwide. With more players and partners working together to develop digital remittances and simplifying cross-border payments, we are creating new opportunities for financial inclusion 
and wealth creation. The Visa Economic Empowerment Institute investigated the cause of digital remittances powered by newer networks and several innovative MTOs and found that the evolution to digital platforms is in fact contributing to bring this cost down. In fact, data gathered in February of this year found that the average cost in 25 key corridor was 3.8%. This is not far from the well-known 3% target. Despite much technological progress, there is still room for improvement, for user experience to improve, and for new economic models. With that, I would like to bring in our panelists to share their thoughts on the current landscape and how we can continue to work together to provide digital alternatives and better user experiences. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to this conversation. Thank you for making the time. Uh, during the next 30 minutes, we're going to uh, talk about remittances, a very important topic that affect the life of millions and millions of individuals around the world. Um, before we start, I would like to announce to the audience that uh, our dear friend Jimmy Dean from CIBC couldn't make it because he has uh, another uh, last minute uh, meeting to attend. But uh, CIBC is I mean, very well represented by uh, our friend Jude Van Gogh. And uh, before we start the, the uh, number of uh, questions, I will ask uh, each of the panelists to introduce themselves and started, starting with you. Um, a little bit about yourself and also the scope of your role and, and what you do in your respective institutions. Thank you, Ruben, and uh, audience, uh, very nice to uh, have this opportunity to, uh, to speak to everybody. Uh, my name, obviously, uh, as Ruben already mentioned, Yup Fagal, I, uh, I joined CIBC five years ago. Um, originally from uh, the Netherlands, I worked there in, with a couple of banks, always, uh, well, most of the time in uh, the payments landscape. Within CIBC, I'm responsible for the various uh, partnerships that we uh, have to support the different products under the Alternate Solutions Group, as well as Simply Financial. And um, yeah, with all those different partnerships, it's obviously a very interesting topic to, to speak about um, remittances, especially in, in a global scale. Perfect. Tom, you want to continue? Thanks, Ruben. Um, so I'm Tom Baltzer. I'm a general manager of financial services at uh, Canada Post Corporation. So uh, I always call uh, when I'm in this uh, type of environment a little bit of the old dinosaur at the table. So I'll uh, I'll try to keep it light friendly and of course uh, focused on digital. Um, but I've been with Canada Post 20 plus years, uh, primarily focused in uh, product management as well as our, our retail business. So our post office network across the country. And uh, that's obviously paid, played a big role in the relationship we have with MoneyGram, which we've had for a number of years. Um, more recently, we've established uh, sort of a new line of business within the, the, the Canada Post business called Financial Services. It's always, you know, we've had some products, but we're, um, we're sort of in a, in a bit of a growth mode looking to, to expand. So uh, thanks for having me, Ruben, and uh, look forward to talking to, uh, to some of the questions and obviously uh, working with this uh, team panel. So thank you. Fantastic. Enrique? Hey, uh, thanks, Ruben. Uh, first, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak on the panel and, and uh, hello to everybody that, that's joined. Um, so I'm a director of product management at Remitly. Um, I've been there for seven years. I currently manage our global dispersion network program where our primary objective is to create reliable, defensible, instant global money transfer network. Um, uh, you know, before, before this role, I also worked, um, you know, at Remitly building out our Latin America network. Um, so, and I'm originally from Mexico, so that, you know, that region is near and dear to my heart. So fantastic. You know, the purpose of this conversation is to find ways for us to continue to collaborate and collectively, uh, you know, eliminate friction from money movement, uh, around the world. No, I mean, these transactions are very important and very close to the life of millions and millions in indivi of individuals, no. There are 200 uh, million workers uh, out there who are living outside their country of origins, and they continue to uh, face significant challenges to move money to support their families abroad. No? Um, this question is for you, Enrique. I mean, you are a slightly different than, I mean, the way that CIBC or uh, Canada Post is addressing remittances in a way that your 
sole focus is on, on this uh, money movement activity. What do you think is, is the vision and the mission and the purpose of uh, Remitly in, in, in this uh, economic activity? Got it. Yeah, so I think uh, I think it's important to just note, so Remitly's, Remitly's vision is, is to transform the lives of immigrants and their families by providing the most uh, trusted financial services uh, on the planet. And so like focus has always been a key part of our strategy and our initial laser focus is on transforming the global remittance industry. Um, so part of transforming this global remittance industry is providing customers with peace of mind, knowing that they can send money to their loved ones anywhere, anywhere in the world via a variety of delivery methods securely and instantly. Um, and so putting a little bit in the context of, of, of Visa Direct and how Visa Direct helps us do that is Visa Direct is a reliable instant service with backing of a strong Visa brand that really instills peace of mind with our customers. So we're currently live in Visa Direct with over 100 countries. We're super excited to offer this opportunity to our customers sending out of, out of Canada. So again, like our, our goal is to serve immigrants um, and their loved ones by providing the most trusted financial services in the company. And we do this by delivering peace of mind. Great, great answer. Tom and, and you, uh, I would like to, to get your, your point of view on how important the remittance sector or, or the segment as a whole fits in your overall strategy uh, from Canada Post and from uh, CIBC point of view and, and how that fits in your overall, um, you know, strategic position in, in, in Canada. You want to go first, uh, Tom? Okay, thanks. So yeah, it's a it's a very good question, and I think it's uh, really on, on on top of mind, uh, especially now that you know uh, we the, the, the simply brand itself, um, you know, next to CIBC, and that's one of the things that we really enjoy at this point is where we have the ability of the you know the brick and mortar, whereas we also have this digital channel now, and I, I think uh, really looking at simply is where you know the strategy is of offering a zero fee based digital banking environment to you know all newcomers to to Canada and i think to that extent uh, where you know cibc but in general canada and to that question that you raised is you know the country is made out of Im immigrants so there is a lot of money floating out of canada to um, you know various countries across the globe so I think there is no other country that has more need for remittance businesses than uh, Canada does. And I think with Visa Direct, we have really enabled a large, um, I would say, window to many of our customers. And I think with, with the Simply, and we can see that as well, is that it really picks up the fact that now you, you can see the transformation from being, you know, paying to accounts to paying to wallets, the, the transformation of the remittance business itself has gone, you know, um, I would say from, from zero to a hundred. And that's also, I think, part of the strategy, especially with respect to, uh, to simply where we keep on digitizing the various channels. I hope that answers uh, the question. Great. Thank you, Jude. Tom, do you want to talk from the Canada Post perspective? Yeah, sure, and I, th I think I mean there's certainly interesting parallels to 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 both uh, Jupe's and Enrique's perspective. Like so as 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 Canada Post, uh, of course, is um, uh, strongly sort of entrenched in the Canadian market, and uh, as mentioned, so we're we've been with more of a traditional remittance company like MoneyGram for the you know for the past decade plus since 2008. Um, and you know, over the course of that time, um, we've certainly leveraged, I think, that that bricks and mortar, that physical relationship um, uh, that uh, that sort of customers and new immigrants to Canada, um, as well as migrant workers, you know, um, expect. And I, I think the one advantage that that we've always carried in the marketplace is that trust in that uh, in that brand that we have, and uh, it's a well well respected brand across the country for. And for a lot, I think a lot of new, um, you know, new people to Canada. Sometimes a lot of that has to, a lot of their experiences has to do where, with where they kind of came from. Um, so strategically, I'll just, because I, mean, I can talk about that a little bit more later. But I think, I think strategically, how um, this fits is that, uh, so in some of our growth aspirations around financial services, the connection to um, uh, the MoneyGram business or the business we have for international remittances and even domestic remittances is very much tied to those experiences around. Um, uh, what those customers are expecting 
And, uh, and I would just say that um, strategically, those customers are, are very important. Some of the aspirations we have to grow some of the services uh, that, we're, that we're looking to bring forward. Um, we, we recently conducted a pilot um, uh, in more the eastern part of Canada around um, an unsecured loan product. And, and in the research that we had done, there was certainly a strong connection to, uh, to that new Canadian population, um, as well as some other segments that, uh, that are very important to us in, in, in Canada. So, so I think strategically, um, you know, if I, if I talk about customers, connection to customers, um, and then commercially, some of the growth aspirations we would have in uh, in the company, and 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 so MoneyGram is a bit of a cornerstone to some of that uh, that service offering in the future. Understand? I will say with with you uh, with one follow up question. You know, in the case of Canada, of course, you have an impressive, uh, I mean, physical footprint. You know, and the combination of brick and mortar and digital is something that uh, you are evolving to. What are the challenges that you're facing when you move? Uh, consumer from a, uh, a physical environment to a digital environment. What, what yeah, the, you know, the, it's, the audience can learn about it? Sure, Ruben, and, and it's such a great question, and I, and I, um, I almost I, I envy I envy Enrique uh, um, to some degree, and uh, and certainly maybe CIBC as well, because they're a bit more of the, the quote unquote the product owner. I, I work through a relationship with MoneyGram, and while it's a very strong strategic relationship that we've had for a long time. Um, you know, doing things can sometimes uh, have its challenges vis-a-vis -vis the governance associated with their uh, governing enterprise and our governing enterprise. Um, Im importantly, I would just say that, yeah, of course, the remittance business has been a very strong bricks and mortar cash oriented business over the years. And, and COVID has been a very strong, um, uh, you, know, kind of new, you know, sort of point where you can see that change. And I, I would just, I would say that within our numbers and what we've seen, you know that that uh, bricks and mortar uh, business is, is still a strong business, but there's definitely a, uh, a hockey stick up curve on on uh, on digital take up. So, so for us, um, uh, there's certainly a lot of work that we need to think about, and very quickly, of course, to stay in lockstep with some of you know some of the competitive influences in the marketplace. Um, but you know, thinking about most importantly, think about customer experiences. So. And I, I always think back to, you know, customers coming to Canada often are, are driven by what their experiences are from where they came from. And, and some of those countries are very driven by digital wallets. M many countries have skipped, um, you know, some of the more traditional banking and, uh, and maybe telephony uh, buildups that we've had here in, in North America. And so, um, you know, understanding that where they're coming from is driving their experience and their expectations here in Canada means we also have to move very quickly to meet those those uh, those evolving expectations, and uh, and so within that, it, it means very very um, having a very strong perspective on creating more omni view. So uh, you know, I in, in my world, it's uh, it, it's it's sort of a physical and a digital. I think we really have to think about you know what experiences uh, do uh, do Canadian um, uh, immigrants that, that are looking for the remittance services. Uh, how do they want to transact? What's important to them? And certainly, I think one of the things that we have as an advantage is that when you can't authenticate yourself uh, digitally, we have a strong in-person network that, that that can do that face-to-face -face authentication and help support those transactions. So, again, I think there's lots of evolution. There's lots of potential partnerships in the future that we'll need to think about. But uh, most importantly, I think it's about customer experiences, where they're coming from, and then how we translate those into how we serve them here in Canada. Very valid points, uh, Tom. Thank you for sharing. Before we continue with the question, I will remind the audience that uh, they can ask questions to the speaker. They just need to go to the chat section and, and ask the speaker some questions. So I will uh, continue with uh, some um, some uh, questions we have for Remitly in this case. You, you know, something that we are observing market to market is that in the origination markets, you no, know, like the U.S., Canada, or Dubai, and some other markets. There is a high degree of bankarization and there is a high degree of digitalization. Uh, in your case, uh, Enrique, I mean, you are a digital first uh, entity. You know? What are the major roadblocks that you are facing in, in managing a, a digital channel and moving uh, consumers to, to a, 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 this kind of environment? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, great question. I think um, I'd like to just kind of give a, a high level overview and then kind of share a customer story around this that I think will um, really kind of bring this to life. So I think like the, the shift to, to you know, digital uh, digital methods of, of moving money is is something that's inevitable, right? That's going to happen regardless. But I think I think 
with COVID, we saw that accelerate, right? I think Tom mentioned the hockey stick uh, graph. That's exactly right. Um, and that's only going to keep happening. But customers actually have a hard time moving from uh, traditional remittance methods to digital dispersion methods. So, and I think like first and foremost, uh, trust is the single most important factor for customers and really drives like this adoption, loyalty and retention. So really to illustrate what I mean. So, you know, I'd like to share share a story of a Filipino immigrant living in Canada. His name's Carlos, works as a janitor, lower income, sends regularly to his mother in Manila. So, you know, the first time he learns about Remitly, he was really unsure about what it was required uh, from him to interact with the app, share personally identifiable information, including like debit, credit card numbers, bank account details, or even like tax identification numbers or social security numbers on a digital app, right? Um, Carlos then asked his friends and, 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 and friends about Remitly, right? And was able to complete his first transaction with us. After this, after his transaction was delivered instantly uh, without a problem, um, created complete peace of mind, right? And Carlos has just kept returning to Remitly. So that's why we really focus on providing that peace of mind because we think that that is what is, you know, if, if we're able to deliver that, customers will come back. It, it is a huge hurdle though um, to get some of these customers, to get, you know, customers to like trust us. That's why having that, that, uh, network of referrers, right? Network of, of, remit, of people that love using Remitly that have had a great experience is also critical to our success. Thank you, Enrique. Great, great story. I mean, and, and I, I believe that this story is becoming universal as, you know, you know, 200 million workers around the world are trying to solve for uh, money movement. Um, the next question is for you, Jup. I mean, you, congratulations, you just launched like a hundred or number of routes with visa direct payouts how the program is evolving i mean and, and how is i mean fitting in your overall i mean uh, money movement strategy yeah no uh, thank you and uh, yeah we are really appreciative of uh, this uh, this recent launch and you know the story that enrique is telling is is you know is really resembling with me and and the different stories that we hear as well you know, as a bank, and then I think this is where we have a little bit of advantage compared to, uh, you know, Enrique and Remitly, where, you know, the bank in general has a trust component with it. Uh, but even, uh, and Tom also mentioned it, the, the transformation or um, from, you know, paying to accounts to, you know, wallets and anything in between, customers are, you know, I would say fast execution is almost a prerequisite for remittance business. And with the digitization that only has grown and customers are, even when they do, you know, making a digital payment, at least on the portal, they also expect the execution to be in the same speed. And that's where I think, you know, we can still learn a lot and improve a lot, but, you know, having this, uh, this launch of Visa Direct now paying into cards, it provides us, you know, an instant solution to almost 5 billion cardholders across the globe right so and although customers still have to get used to it because paying into a card is a little bit different than you know the traditional pay to account or a wallet because even the wallet already is more of res resounding with them but the, yeah the push to card that is really phenomenal and immediate execution and then a response so yeah we're, we're very pleased with it and uh yeah the fact that you have access to such a large network is just tremendous and you could not establish that you know um through regular uh, the correspondent banking networks or, or anything else. So yeah, thank you for that. And uh, we, the, the responses have been great. Thank you. I, I want to move a little bit the conversation around um, regulations and policy making. Um, you know, the, the, there is a absolutely valid uh, point from regulators and, and policy making in trying to protect consumers from abuses and anti-money laundering policies, et cetera, et cetera. But in your, from your point of view, what do you think the, the, the regulators in each market should do to uh, accelerate the, the transition to digital? Have you seen any particular case where the regulator is actually helping us to move uh, from, from a, a, you know, a physical environment to a digital environment that you, you, you want to, to, to share? 
or what is your overall your overall impression around this? And and the question is for for the three of you, whoever wants to to take yeah, it. I'll, I'll take a quick uh, quick stab at it. So I think it, just in general, I we are in favor of policies that that strength strengthen immigrant communities. Also, like one of the pillars is of our company is really to improve the access to financial services. Um, and we can't do this without good regulation, right? Um, so we, we we welcome responsible regulation because it really helps us establish trust and provides a framework for responsible innovation. So um, we share our regulators' interest in serving and protecting the interests of our customers. Now, an example of like where regulation can help and, and where it could potentially slow down is, is like think about uh, Mexico, for example, right? Uh, you know, huge, huge corridor. I think, you know, there's numbers coming out closer to the 50 billion per, you know, in 2021. Um, but, you know, reality is it's still about 60, 70% of the remittances to Mexico are cash, right? Um, the, you know, the, the, the fintech industry is also just very nascent in Mexico. Why? Because the regulation is very unclear. Um, and so it's, it's like, you know, the regulators are, are, want to, you know, enable more innovation, but they're unsure, you know, how to do that with, you know, considering all the like incumbent banks uh, interests and all that. Right. And so, you know, the lack of regulation there has also has really impacted the speed of innovation. And so, again, it's just to make the point that good regulation, good responsible regulation, where uh, it's easy to understand the framework just allows for innovation um, and will speed up the transition to digital. Great. Right. Tom, you any any point of view on that one? Yeah, I can I can jump in if you want. I, I certainly again I'm um, uh, over the years I would say you know, the the view around fraud and um, and how how companies interact with that and and how regulators um, you know work to try to enforce it is certainly um, I think it's been a, a learn and growth thing over time and certainly you know again in my mind consumer fraud. Um, is absolutely the responsibility of all of us to make sure that we're protecting uh, the consumers. So, um, uh, you know, I've got a number of stories uh, across our network where our, our frontline people have actually stopped people from sending money because they recognize the, the, the romance scam or the different scams that are actually in place. Um, so a big, big supporter of, um, of the, the requirements, especially, you know, especially around AML and consumer fraud. You did ask, you know, what what could be done um, to improve it or make it better, and and you know, again, I think it's kind of incumbent on us to make sure that in the background, using artificial intelligence, so AI capabilities, driving, um, you know, driving uh, logic in the background uh, that helps support customers uh, when they're actually, you know, trying to transact. I think is actually um, exactly where those investments need to be made. And 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 again, I, I'm all for efficiency and driving costs down so that there's an opportunity to be as as efficient as possible for consumers. I do think we also need some margin to make sure that we're uh, reinvesting those dollars to improve systems, to improve uh, the fraud and AML capabilities of, um, of all of our engines, so to speak, that, that help people, uh, you know, help people to uh, do what they want to do, which is essentially just send money to family and, and uh, you know, and do the, do the right thing. So um, that, that's my view. I think it's, you know, the, the more, the better. It, it's just, you know, again, it's, it's trying to find that balance of, uh, of making sure that we've, We've got the right energy attached to it to improve the lives of our customers. Yeah, no, I, I can only echo those uh, those comments as well. I usually look at it, you know, from two different lenses. One is, you know, the the actual money laundering, um, and obviously, you know, nobody wants to be supportive of that, and we have the regulations in place. I think if you look at it from the remittance business, um, from a regulatory perspective, I think we, on a on a global scale, we could do more to harmonize things. You know, if we have clients that are being subject to scams or, or fraudulent situations where we want to retrieve the money, there should be abilities where we can, you know, act more quickly and more uh, vigil to, to to retrieve those funds. And now it's, it's it's what I experience and also some of the stories that were shared to me is like it takes so long, especially if you go to other countries, you know, to go through all these procedures to to retrieve the funds or even to be able to block the funds. And I think. That's where I think we as an industry, there is a lot of opportunity for us to harmonize things and, you know, for the best interest of our clients and especially the people that are remitting the funds out of Canada to the different countries. So I, I, I think from, uh, you know, the first part where I said, OK, the, the regular money laundering, I think we have a lot of regulations in place. 
um, you know, it's still being tightened which is fine. And I think that's all what, you know, again, to that word, uh, trust, uh, I think that's uh, that's what being established. I think where we can actually use those regulations to help us, I think that's where we can uh, still uh, do a little bit more effort on, on a global scale to uh, to help these people and especially the clients. Thank you, Jupe. I, I, there is a very interesting question from the audience that talks a little bit uh, the point that you're making around uh, harmonization. And the question is for Enrique, and it says, how do you manage various regulatory requirements of two countries that could make it difficult for seamless transfer? No? Um, because it's not universal regulation, how you keep track of the different uh, uh, regulatory environments, I guess that's the, the spirit of the question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think, uh... You know that's that's part of the I'd say the the, the secret sauce, right? We have we have three thousand corridors, right? When you look at all our send and receive corridor combinations, um, and as you said, each send region is going to have different KYC requirements. Each receive region is going to have different, um, you know, receiver side requirements, right? And there's going to be different uh, compliance checks, risk fraud checks, right? That are specific to that country. And so one of our strategies at Remitly is we call it localization at scale, where we don't, we don't take a cookie cutter approach to how we launch quarters. We're actually, we're, we built a product in such a way where we can, you know, add or remove the questions, you know, the, the, the data we collect for a specific quarter um, very quickly, the similar with the risk rules, with our risk systems and KYC systems. So again, it's hard to kind of describe, but that's really our, our secret sauce, right? We call it localization of scale to be able to be very specific um, about what we need and what we need to check um, on a per quarter basis. That's a great. Uh, Maybe to, to add to that, uh, Enrique, uh, what I see as well is that it's not just you know all the regulations that we as an institute have to deal with, but it's also for again you know the, the customers, the remitters that are you know sending money to their loved ones. It's often very a complex situation okay hey mm -hmm. I, if i send com, you know, money to country x i need to provide this if i send money to country y i suddenly require a difference why is that you know um i need to provide so much information and, and so it's often for for clients as well it's a it's a challenge too in, in the remittance business yep absolutely totally agree besides the regulatory aspect and, and the in the you know complexities that I mean money movement uh, uh, represent for as an industry what do you think are the major roadblocks that exist out there for the industry to become uh, a, a lot more frictionless uh, in the next couple of years is that Any? a question oh um, what I on top of mind, uh, because it's it, obviously it's a great question. Um, I would say that I think what I talked about before is where there is a prerequisite to have a fast and execution of the payment. What um, I see happening in the, the landscape is that usually we can get the confirmation that the beneficiary bank has been reached, but actually the credit of to the customer's account that is something that I think. On a global scale, we can do a lot better, which presents a really end-to-end, -end fast, you know, experience to to the customer, because it, it's again, it's difficult to explain again to the client. It's like, okay, hey, yeah, the funds reached the beneficiary bank, but it did not reach your uh, your beneficiary, and then uh, I think that's where um, there is a lot of education still to be done uh, regarding uh, the remittance of funds globally to uh, the different clients. Thank you, Jim. Um, this question is for, for the three of you. Um, what do you think, I mean, networks like Visa should do to support more, uh, you know, your efforts to, you know, digitize this type of transaction? If you are in, in our position and taking you as, a, as an advisor of what somebody like us in, our, in, in Visa can do, what, what we can do to support you uh, more? Yeah, I think I think uh, I think for for Remitly, I, I think it really it really comes down to to understanding the customer and their needs. And so, if I would put if I would put that in the context of, of Visa Direct, I think 
um, continuing to, to explain, expand your global coverage, right? Continuing to expand, um, continuing to improve the quality of the service, right? It's, 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 re- it's a really good service. Like don't, don't, uh, you know, don't take that as it's not, but, you know, continue to improve authorization rates where there's area for improvement, right? Um, you know, moving, moving as, you know, moving as many cards as possible to fast funds enabled, right? Um, and, you know, I just, I think that we're, we're definitely on the, on the right track and I'm really excited to partner with, with Visa and continuing to, to expand and offer this service to our customers. Maybe just jump in and say, I think I, I would, uh, I would line up to both of those comments for sure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that uh, we're connected uh, through MoneyGram on the, you know, on the receive end. Uh, with Visa Direct, I think there's opportunity there to make sure, to uh, to Enrique's point, that there's, you know, there's more penetration across across markets. I mean, certainly, you know, different different corridors react different ways vis-a-vis, you know, how um, uh, customers expect to receive, and from from that, it's driving, you know, how customers uh, expect or want or need to send. Um, so, in continuing to evolve that uh, that presence uh, globally, I think is going to be critically important, and then. Um, you know, I think just from maybe more, you know, from a can of poster. So what we're doing within the space, uh, it's a bit more probably of the front end experience and how we actually would provide more visibility to some of that receive functionality at the back end. But right now, I'd say we're, we're probably pretty poor um, uh, at, uh, you know, communicating the end to end component of what's happening to the funds. So there's just trust at the front end because of who you're, you're you, who you're transacting with. Um, and in the partnership that we have, but at the, you know, at the, at the, uh, at that front of that relationship, we're not necessarily being as transparent about the whole process. But I think that's something that we have to do, but in, in partnership with like a, a visa director, I think there's visa, visa director's opportunity there to, um, uh, to enhance that, uh, that communication with the customer. Yeah, no, I can only agree to those, uh, those statements. I think, you know, visa direct has really stepped into an area uh, based on their own experience from the traditional rails um you know east um some of the the, the challenges that were uh, we are facing in the traditional way of uh, trans, transmitting uh, funds and um yeah especially with such a reach um yeah that is unbelievable and yeah i think visa has really um stepped up the game in in that remittance space um with you know removing quite a few hurdles that uh, we face in the traditional way of uh, transmitting funds and um, yeah, the only thing, and uh, Tom mentioned it, but I already said it before, I think where we can you know, improve things on the end-to-end communication to the actual final beneficiary, I think that would be uh, yeah, something that would be really appreciated by the remitters themselves. You know, if you get an immediate response saying, hey, uh, the funds have been credited to your uh, beneficiary, um, yeah, I think everybody is appreciative of that, especially in these times where you know, we just or getting out of the, the, the pandemic. Um, people have been transmitting funds all over the world. Um, and yeah, if you get a response immediately that the funds have been uh, credited to your beneficiaries account, I think, uh, or, or your loved ones, then yeah, everybody is appreciative of that. Great feedback and, and, and great insights. Um, let me talk, we, we have like five minutes more, but uh, let's try to cover um, the consumer point of view on all this. Now, everything we're doing here is to uh, make the the life of our consumers uh, easier, no? And providing peace of mind, security, and reliability. Are there any particular value-added services that your consumers are demanding today or are urgent today that we should be trying to collectively build? Uh, I think we 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 hear a little bit here and there of of, of those cases, but I, I would like to start with you with with you, Enrique. I mean. Is there anything that, as an industry, we should be thinking uh, in the next two or three years to jointly develop to super serve these these consumers uh, around the world? Yeah, I think that's a that's a good question, and 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 not to uh, not to oversimplify, but um, you know what a uh, uh, joke was mentioning really resonates with me. I think like. M- Moving to instant experiences as much as possible, I think, is is something that needs to happen. Um, you know, and you see a lot of opportunities uh, across the world with that, right? And you're starting to see really a a a, a step function change. For example, Brazil with PIX, uh, India with UPI, but we need to see more than that, right? Like you you still have 
some very, very big um, uh, countries in terms of remittance inflows with very, very slow ACH systems, right? And so I'd say, you know, kind of improving that technology, trying to make remittances as instant as possible, I think uh, is one one first step. Also, I think, you know, um, you know, customers still pay in some cases an arm and a leg to send a remittance, right? So making making a remittance more affordable for customers, um, I think is also uh, something that, that we should be thinking about. I think the other thing too is in terms of, um, I think, one of the things that we've seen at Remitly also is, is, you know, if, if, if there's opportunities to actually catch errors or catch, you know, things that may be, you know, go, go wrong down, down the road, right. In the, in, I guess in the last mile of the, of the transfer, doing that up front goes a long way. I think Ruben, uh, there's something that Visa Direct is working on. That's great. It's uh, this concept of alias service, right. Where you're able to validate, receiving information before ever sending the the information the the transaction very simple but that kind of stuff goes a really really long way so again it's really about providing peace, peace of mind and i think we do that by you know delivering instant experiences great thank you tom do you anything to add on that one um yeah again a great question i think it also um is not easy to answer i um, at the same time i think we we touched on several things as well um, you know, Enrique already mentioned it, it's the peace of mind that is really what is important and what is driving the, the customer. And I think one of the things, and especially to get that, you know, um, the speed of service, um, I think on the technology is where we have standardization on, for instance, APIs. You know, everybody is developing their own uh, set of APIs, and which makes it very challenging and also very costly in order to, you know, connect with the different markets and, and so on. And so I think that would be a very great step forward if we were able to harmonize you know, technical developments on an API. But also one of the other things that we touched upon is global harmonization of um, regulations. And I think those two factors, I think if we were able to pull that off, I think everything would be uh, a lot smoother and a lot cheaper as well. I'm going to just quick, as I see we're probably up uh, almost out of, out of time, but um, it, research showed us that new Canadians also have some needs internally within the, the domestic market. And so, you know, that's one of the things that we're looking at is how we create additional value for those uh, remittance customers. That's a, a, a beyond just remittances. Um, uh, Cause certainly there's, there's definitely some needs for underbanked and uh, um, unbanked Canadians and new Canadians, I should say specifically. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Enrique, uh, for the conversation. Great insight, great conversation. I hope the audience uh, appreciate the the insights that you guys shared. And I really want to thanks also the the audience for the additional questions. So, thank you so much for participating. Thank you for having yeah. us. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, gang.